out, we're going to say okay. All right. So welcome, everybody. We've got a couple of new faces today. I know that Robin, who's with us, she only can be here for a half an hour. So just, and she disappears, and your screen changes, maybe. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, and then we have California, Rachel, and Ohio, Wendy. So we're covering the country today. It's lovely. The rest of us are local. Right. Beautiful. Color. So what I'm going to do is I'll share my screen, show you the outline. You might want to have a piece of paper and pencil. And then what I'll do is once I get the recording, then I'll share both the handout and the recording. So, and it's very funny because my husband and I share the Zoom account which is sometimes I get the recording immediately and sometimes he gets it. So it's been a very interesting thing going, um, do you have the recording? <laughs> Can you pass it back to me? <laughs> it's very funny, but it's never dull. All right, let me get to our little form. Okay. <clears throat> so I put a light spectrum on here because that's um, important because we're going to talk about the color therapy or color healing or color modality. Oh, Millie just came. Let's get her in here. <clears throat> so she... So we're going to talk about that, but be aware that you, there are times when as you get more aware of color as a vibration and an experience, that you might see these other qualities that are listed above in the light spectrum. You might have an awareness of, say, um, uh, infrared which is just off one side of the light spectrum. It might not be that you're seeing it with your naked eye, but you might see it if you close your eyes. So just be aware that your relationship with color, with color can change. You know, I uh, work with this one physicist and that's one of the things that she speculated was when I close my eyes, I see a different color. And that's her thoughts around that. And this is part of the color theory and therapy. So just be aware that you're saying, so notice that I just did a little short paragraph right here. And it just says colors of vibration. And when you connect to color, it depends upon your intuition. So each one of us, our body, our senses, read energy vibration differently. Now, some of us can have the same experience. We both can see the color blue, whether we keep our eyes closed or whether we, or we feel blue. Today, I, I wore a, a vibrant green. I just felt like that felt really good to me when I was doing the, col the color thing of my, uh, Closet. I was like, okay, which one do I want to wear today? What feels right? Boop, this is the one. So you might see color, you might hear color, you might taste color, you might feel it against your skin. Ooh, I don't like that color, whatever that might be. Or you might just know, that's it. That's the one. Uh, when I was opening my center in Andover, I needed to pick colors of the wall, my carpet, and all that kind of stuff. And I did a lot of it in the knowing one. It was like I'd pick up these things and I'd see which one felt better in my hand or on my body. And that's how I picked the colors. And they were real cool, cool colors. Like uh, it was a, a gray with a little bit of purple in it, things like that. Um, color therapy, color healing has been around for centuries thousands and thousands of years. There's documentation way back into Egypt. 
So you can, you know that it's around, but what is happening in the world of healing is that color therapy is making a new comeback. So there is, so I started to list um, references and there are so many. You want to be discerning because some of them you can read, like I was reading some different books and some of them were on my Kindle, some of them were some of them were not so good, no science behind it. And others of it were written so well and the person was really intuitive. So, you know, they didn't have any science, but they had really good information, very accurate. With the experience I've had is the color and then I'm finding the science to talk about the light spectrum. Um, and now there are programs that you can be in and certified. So the first place I would say, I, my experience with color is that I took polarity umpteen years ago and part of the training there was how to bring in the color and how to have a relationship with color therapy and, and then uh, noticing your intuition. And so it was a really great thing to learn and then probably 20 some odd years ago, I was in an energy program for four or five years. And that was similar, but the depth which I learned it was in polarity. And so when you're looking for resources, anything that's connected to polarity, and if you don't, you can't find anything, let me know. Um, I felt like that was again, Dr. Stone, the founder of polarity, really had a good relationship with science and the energy. So what I did is I listed my protocol and all I did was take a little snapshot out, out of it because my protocol is actually five pages long. So when I'm doing a color assessment, uh, I'm breaking it down. So first place that I start is of course an evaluation. So you can do this. You can use a dowsing, but you want to be really mindful about color because it's a vibration. So it's just like anything. You can get too much of it and you can be depleted of it. So for it, this is an example of that. Sometimes there are certain people who want nothing to do with the color red. Now, why would that be? Okay. Well, what would you think red would be? Like warning. Warming, that's right. Is that what the, yeah. you said? Warming. Well, I meant warning, but warming was good too. Is that right? <laughs> All of the above. My, this would be my word, fire up. Okay. So warning. Agitation? Say again. Agitation. Exactly. So you want to be looking at, because each one of you have just named what red is for you. Now I wear red, but I, in my closet, the colors I have are green, blue, purple, different, the reds, I have five reds. When do I wear them mostly? Christmas time, <laughs> right? So it's huh. like, so when you get too much red in your system, what would that do? agitate so you can be very mindful of especially um educators we have a couple of educators kids get overstimulated red's not necessarily the best one for them to wear but i'm going to talk a little bit it might be the best one maybe for them to put their feet on why was that be Red's supposed to be the root chakra. But mm -hmm. is that the right one for them? You can unmute yourself, you guys, if you wanted to ask questions, because we've got a small enough group, we can pull it off. So Wendy and Rachel, you guys can go ahead and do that. So, <clears throat> so just, that's the kind of thing. So evaluation, I'm gonna start with Usually I start with the physical body. 
and I find out what's working for that person, what's not working. So that's a really good solid place to start with anybody doing anything. And even if you wanna get your feet wet in it, what's working, what's not working. Okay, so working would mean in the color world, you're solid, you understand and you know that when you put this color on, you feel good, you think clearer, you feel grounded. All of this feeling like you're in alignment with yourself. You put this color on, like the red we were talking about, it's not as helpful. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna look at the physical body. I'm gonna find out what's working and not working. So let's, what I'm gonna use as an example here is energy anatomy. So I'm going from the physical body to the energy anatomy because energy is about vibration and color is vibration. So now I'm talking instead of, what is it, apples and oranges, I'm talking apples and apples. Energy anatomy and color, which is a vibration. So now I've gone, oh, this person is telling me they're not sleeping. Huh, well, sleeping is connected to the pineal gland. The pineal gland is at the top of the head, right, near the crown chakra. Okay, so now I'm looking at it and going, okay, well, what would be the energy anatomy? So when you're looking at uh, glands, your endocrine system, that is the sister system to chakras. Okay, so now I'm going down my trail. They're not sleeping. That's not working. Pineal glands responsible for the melatonin, serotonin. Okay, energy, anatomy. We're at the crown chakra. So now we've done step one of the vibrate of your evaluation. So now anybody who does dowsing, muscle testing, AK, if you do the finger, whatever you do, however you're going to discern this piece is it is the crown chakra balanced? Yes or no? And then I'm going to say, is, it, is there an ex excess of energy here? Yes or no? Is there a deficiency? Yes or no? Okay, so now this is just me simplifying step one of the evaluation. Is that making sense to everybody? Just give me a thumbs up so I can know. Yep, 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 good. So if I wanted to do all the chakras, I would, that would have me staying in the endocrine system. And then I can find out what's working, what's not working. And maybe they only have one chakra and one issue. Great. So then we know that the color therapy aspect of their treatment with me that day is going to be the crown chakra. Okay. So now we've done the evaluation piece. And let's say we found out that there was an excess in the crown chakra, which is why the person's not sleeping. Okay. So now are we going to add energy or do we want to take it away? Okay. Well, if they have excess, what we want to do is not do anything. We want to invite the system because color is very powerful to balance itself. So now we're down to the treatment plan. I'm in my session now. We've got our we know that they're not sleeping, pineal glands involved. We've confirmed it with our dowsing that there's now an excess here. Now I've got choices. <clears throat> and I just, these are just a few examples. I figured if you're wanting to try this, these are all pretty easy to do. 
So the first one is color cloths. There are specific color cloths that you can purchase that are the pure vibrations of like the spectrum. Um, so that's one option. There are people who have um, a chakra blanket made. So that again, it has the, sh the chakra color that's associated with it. And then it's laid according to the body. So that, you know, the highest vibration would be the purple, blue, and then it moves down. Green is in the middle. There's the orangey kind of color, yellow. You know, you move it all the way down in a, the chakra blanket. You can also, and I think, Wendy, you were the one that asked me about visualizations in an email or something. So visualizations is like its own class, but... The idea would be, I'm going to just do the short version of it, visualizations to bring in color. So your mind is very powerful. And let's say we've decided that there, this person's crown chakra needs the color green because it's got excess. But to balance that excess, we need to bring in the color green, not more purple, or too much red, because that might be, I think, Linda, you said this, agitating. Well, we don't want to do that. So we're going to bring in green. So you're going to visualize whatever that color is. So if it's this shade of green, if you have the color cloth, great. It, some of the kits that I've seen, they have um, colored cards that are the vibration that you're looking for. So then that's what you're gonna do is like next week, I'm gonna talk about um, object meditation. And the way you do object meditation is you look at an object, you look at it with your eyes, you see it, you see it, you see it, then you close your eyes and you see if you get an image of that object. <coughs> you hold that object in your mind for as long as you can and then when you can't hold it anymore and you don't see it you open your eyes and you looked at the object again okay that's exactly how you would visualize the color that you need so that's that's the exercise that you would do so we here's the treatment plan right not sleeping crown chakra and we've decided that the balance is green because they have an excess. So now our visualization as a practitioner is going to be the color green and we're bringing in the color and we're just offering it to the person's energy field. So now you visualize that color. You also can get a green crystal. You know, like this is gaspiite a stone that I'm wearing, nice shade of green. It's not the same color as the spectrum, but then again, you would douse it. Whatever stones you have and that you think it's going to be green. Well, or here's the other option. You can use a clear quartz and have it do the same thing. You can take the clear quartz, hold it in the hand, see that color green, fill up the clear, clear quartz and point it to the person's chakra. Right? So now you're bringing in that color through that. And then you could have the person, so now their aura is filled with green. You can have them now breathe it in. See yourself bringing in that green color into your entire being, into the aura, so that the body, the energy, will know exactly how to balance it. So those are some short ways that I might do a session. And here's the catch to the whole thing, and I wrote it at the very bottom. Be mindful of the dosage. The dosage of any color vibration should be 15 seconds, 30 seconds because it's a vibration, right? 
It's not in time and space. That's the catch to the whole thing. We usually, we think, oh, I'm just going to turn it on. Buzz, right? More is always better. No. Because if you give the person too much of that vibration, so let's, again, we're going back to the example. They're not sleeping. Pineal gland, crown chakra, excess. We're bringing in a green to balance. And if you give them too much, what's going to happen? Goes the other way? Could possibly. Or what else could happen? Maybe they don't have an excess of the purple anymore, but now they have too much green up here. We're going to actually facilitate imbalance. We may even give them a headache. We could even cause them to have such an energy disturbance they could be throwing up. I, I had a client who I said to her, I'm like, you know, I'm really feeling like I need to keep this part of the session, maybe five minutes. And she was like, absolutely not. I want it all in this area, but, 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 but she told, you know, and the client's paying me. And I said, okay, here's the deal though. I gave her a verbal disclaimer. <laughs> if you're up throwing up, at two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning, please just email me and let me know. And of course she called, because what was she doing? She was sick. She was about, she said about three, from three to 6 a.m. she was throwing up. Wow. And I said, it was too much and I'm so sorry. So, you know, it's, it's our minds play with us when we think, so that's why if you are not a dowser or you don't do some form of kinesiology where it's outside of the mind and our emotion, you want to make sure you have that checks and balance. I mean, people are used to me using my dowsing rod or my pendulum because I'm, I'm like, I don't care if you really want to, if you want to go this way, go for it. But I'm not doing it. If I can avoid it, I don't want to make you sick. Because if you cuss me, I'm going to know it. Right? You're going to feel it, whatever it might be. Now, does that all make sense to you guys? Yeah? Good. Yes. Thumbs up, everybody. Okay. So, that's a treatment plan. That's a practitioner treating a person. And so when I do something like color, I do maybe some polarity. I might throw in, and this is distant also, some zero balancing to balance energy and structure. I'm going to do things that helps them integrate and balances that whole situation. Sometimes I save the color for last. Sometimes I do the color first. So, and sometimes the color issue, if you will, doesn't show up until it's not somewhere in the middle where the person says, I'm not feeling very well. Okay, well, let me do some diagnostics. And I go through their energy field. And I'm like, oh, wow, your whole field's filled with yellow. Or in my language, I'd say yellow, but uh, so. What can I say? So the thing is, is that you want to be mindful because it can show up anytime, but I don't want to scare anybody about not doing it because it's a very awesome way to feng shui your home, to help you feel better, wearing a different color. You know, Linda is an artist, so she's always, you know, creating um, beautiful things using color. So it's like all of that is life and we want to do it, but you want, the more mindful you are, the more you're mindful about vibration and mm -hmm. what your world looks like with that vibration. Now let's look at homework. So let's say 
You came to see me and I did that diagnostics. I'm gonna douse at the very end of the treatment plan and I'm gonna say, is this complete? That's my, that's my phrase. You may have your own way of figuring out if whatever you've done for the person today is complete. And then let's say you got a yes. So then I'm going to give homework. I'm, um, I love homework because it's a way of helping the person participate in their own care. It, it's another way of helping the person empower them to start getting curious about what's going on because many times in our world, we are, I, uh, dependence too strong of a word, but we're not really encouraged to have a voice in our treatment. You know, the person goes and does it to you. I'm not really, that's not my style. And it is very different than some other people that I've gone to see where they just do it for you. So you want to just be mindful of this is my style of adding homework. It may be yours too. So notice I would give them homework. A person, I have a person who comes and she just wants energy work. I don't touch her. I just sit in my chair and she lays on the bed and um, I give her whatever douses, Reiki, magnified healing, whatever the treatment is. But what keeps showing up is she's always wearing black. Black shirts, black jacket, black boots, black socks. And I was like, okay, you need to be wearing color. And her idea of color was she started wearing white and black. <laughs> no color. I was like, wow. Okay. So, you know, everybody has these different vibrations that they really like. And you want to pay attention if you have a balanced amount of color in your world. You know, some people do really well with wearing the multicolored shirts and things like that. I don't handle that well. It's too much energy, too busy for me. I tend to wear, and you'll notice there are solids. Every video I make, whatever I wear, I'm usually wearing some form of solids because it's easier for my energy system to pay attention to that color. So the homework I might give is if this person balanced, so if their crown chakra is no, I might encourage them to wear green since that was what balanced them because as everyone knows, this person, when their crown chakra is open, what could be going on? What's going on? What would you think? Nobody has a thought? Headaches, brain fog, I don't know. Yeah, they could have all that. So that, that could be hormonal, right? So that would mean maybe their pituitary is also involved. But the other thing I would be thinking is if you're looking at it on from the physical level, then you go to the emotional level, do they have something going on? And they're thinking so much that they're literally like frying their endocrine system, right? It's overloaded in the emotional world, in the mental world, same thing, right? Thinking, thinking, thinking. But what's this one for? What is this particular chakra for? Connection to the divine. Oh. Right? This is God, divine energy. And you, you know, when it comes in the crown chakra, this is where we become form. So it's like God's expression. And I'm using God loosely. God, divine Gaia, whatever your thought is about how the world works. But that's what you're looking for is 
you might say, okay, let's keep you balanced. Let's look at wearing green. And then you can douse through that, or you can do the muscle testing, whatever your style is. And you can say, okay, you should wear green three times a week. Now that green could be a stone. It could be a, a green shirt. It could be that uh, I do distant animal work and I have a client who has four animals and one of them is always out of balance. I mean, he's the one that causes the ruckus in the house. And I asked him one time, what, does, what do you need to not cause ruckus? And that's the color he showed me was this color green. So I told her that. I sent her a picture of the color of green that I saw. And she went out and got him a blanket. And it settled him down. Hmm. So you can, you know, it's just, it was again, color, vibration, and he needed something to help him balance. So wearing a color, sleeping on a color, and then you can notice that the homework could be the same thing. Visualize bringing in a color. I might ask the person to do a meditation every day and that the first thing that they do, set their timer and just do one minute, 30 seconds of the color they're supposed to be doing for their balance. Or I might say to them, please don't do the meditation if you're going to wear your malachite, you know, are you going to put on your green shirt? Because I want to keep, we want to keep them in balance. And, you know, too much is too much. I could ask them to imagine breathing in whatever the color is that balances them before they go to bed. Right? So because the Pineal is the one that's out of balance and they're not sleeping. So maybe that visualization is the key to, for them to getting a good night's sleep. And then this is one of my favorite homeworks, which is eating color foods. So I primarily eat a plant-based diet and I see to it that everything in my diet has, you know, like in a, I'm eating, you know, eggplant and I have green pepper and I eat a yellow squash and I have tomatoes and I have sweet potatoes and all of those, right, are in that spectrum. So again, I, what I'm trying to do is balance my energy. And then you can make solarized water. And what that means is you could use one of your colored cloths or you could use a particular crystal that can appropriately be put in water. You just have to email, email you have to Google search that. And you, some of the, them tolerate, I have a couple of different books on gem water, but some of them tolerate being out in the sun. Some of them just need 24 hours of being, like lace agate is one of the ones that I've used for myself and it's a light blue and I just put it in the water and then I douse uh, how much am I supposed to have every day for how long. So that, you know, that it's like a prescription and that's what I would do for somebody if they felt like they should have rose quartz. That's a beautiful, but pink, that soft pink and rose quartz, very powerful. So you, it wouldn't be unusual for me to say to somebody, just have a fourth of a teaspoon. And let's do this maybe twice a week. And then after a couple of weeks, let me know. Because again, we're giving them not only the crystal vibration, but we're giving them a certain color too. So solarized water is really another very powerful way to bring in the color. And then, Doses, like I said, you want to be really paying attention to how much are you taking in and then how do you feel? So if you're the practitioner, you want to be mindful of how much color therapy did you do and how are you feeling afterwards and did it throw off your balance? Those kinds of things are really important to 
And I'm going to send this to you too. So I'm going to stop the share so I can take any questions for. So questions. Yeah, none. Yeah, yeah. Just un unmute yourself if you want. Yeah. So I've been using for the last few weeks uh, color uh, glass bottles to solarize the the water. Uh -huh. Is that is, is that okay uh, instead of the crystals? So, oh, you mean like the the bottle itself is already colored? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that's yeah, that's fine too. I mean, there's the color therapy and color heal, healing has gotten really um, sophisticated. There are machines you can buy that gives you specific vibrations, and then they're in that spectrum, and then you can buy colorized glass bottles for the same thing. I mean, it, it's like most things. The amount of things you could purchase and buy and have in your collection are infinite. Yeah. Yeah. Cindy, is color therapy something that you um, utilize with every client or you just intuitively know? I pretty much, I have a, for dowsing, I have a two page list of the things that I do. So I just usually, I, had my dowsing rod in my hand and I just do my finger down, you know, find them. I might start and say, okay, how many of these modalities am I to do today? One, two, three, where are you? One, and then the, oh, it's on, the other two are on the second page. One, two, here we are. So if color shows up, that's how I, I don't assume. I, I'm, the thing that's really the sticky piece, if you're a practitioner and you're offering it to somebody, the client is always right. But it's, for me, uh, eyes wide open. Like the client I use as an example, I'll be glad to do more, but I also need you to be aware that this is a vibration and too much is too much. So if you're uncomfortable, it's not going to send you to the hospital, but it could, you know, like yellow is a really one. If you get too much in that, you're going to have diarrhea, guaranteed. You may even be vomiting because it really upsets the digestion. So the body just goes, oh, too much yellow, boom, explosion. But again, you have to be sensitive and that must be like where you, for me, that would definitely happen. Of all my systems, digestion is the challenge. So you want to just be, I would douse it. That would be my answer, of course. Imagine that. Douse it, douse it, douse it. I mean, our mind really it knows this much. But our energy is infinite and that's the place where you it's like you want to find a way uh, to get around the corner from your mind so i love that thank you you're very it's it's really true because it's like we want what we want because we want it but that's all mind that has nothing to do with what's for your highest good and go ahead. Sorry. Somebody was getting ready to say something. Well, I was just going to, I feel like I'm, well, first of all, I'm very, very um, early to this whole journey. And then I came on late to this conversation. So the, the um, color spectrum, I feel like I missed some of that discussion around the color. And I just wondered if you could. Uh, it really, I, I just talked about the fact that I put this up here as that's the visible light spectrum. So that's the color spectrum most of us know. But uh, as you are more aware of your relationship with color, you will be able to connect with the non-visible parts of the spectrum. And it might, not, it might not come through your physical eye, 
probably won't because that you don't have the rods and cones in your eyes to actually pick that up. But then your intuition is the part that can go, okay, I don't know what this is. And I do this to my physicist person. It's like, I don't know what this is, but the color, I've never seen it in my life. And it's over because I'll ask, show me the spectrum, show me where this sits because I have to explain myself to her. <laughs> She'll go, what? What did you just say? And I always laugh about it, but she's the one, one of the first people who, you know, made me think about what I was doing. And so I had to slow it down and say, oh, and she actually, she, she's at MIT and she gave me an article on the uh, person who had done some research on people that pick up that spectrum infrared and all those things it's pretty funky mm -hmm. i would say i tease her i'm like you make me feel weird <laughs> i guess i am a little but well, they don't always have the language to explain what's you know that's the part is developing the language to explain what's going on inside is right yeah. well and we many times don't even have the words because there's not that many people around you who you can have this conversation with where they don't want to just send you to the psychiatrist, right? Oh, Kason, that's nice. Or anybody's husbands <laughs> who think you're a little crazy. Oh yeah, or kids. You could just pick them all. Whoops, we'll close that. So you were saying something about um, using cloths in yes. water. Can you say more about that? In the, in the solarized water, Please. you can use a glass jar and those same, uh, they're usually silk or cotton because natural fibers, you know, the light, the, sol the sun would get in. Um, and they just, you wrap it around that glass bottle and you leave it for a certain amount of time. And then it solarizes with say the red or it solarizes with green and then you would douse through and say okay this is going to be really good to balance my heart chakra because that's what you're going to use it for let's say you've thought about this or you doused through it you gave yourself your own uh energy analysis and then you're going to do that once a week for three weeks or every other day or and it's going to be a tablespoon of it and so it's like taking a supplement, but it's not what's a traditional supplement, right? One that you can go into the drugstore and purchase. Does that help a little bit? Yeah. What about um, colored plastic cups? Like Starbucks has these awesome color changing cups. Yep. Do you know the answer? I'm thinking, well, I'm, I'm guessing it would, but then I'm thinking if it's plastic, maybe it wouldn't. Correct. Because what you're looking for is what conducts energy. Does plastic conduct energy? Because it's a, you know, inorganic material. You know, the only reason that our phones require some is because of the amounts of energy in it. You have to have something to protect you from it, right? So it's that kind of thing, thinking about what works. It's a, it, like next week when I talk about meditation, the re, what I'm going to be talking about is, okay, let's talk about position. There are a lot of rules. I'm using the word loosely. A lot of rules around meditation. I'm here to tell you after, let's see, I've been meditating since I was 15. That's an extremely long time, right? Because I'm 60. So it's like, and I have tried it all. And the same thing with colored waters and bottles versus plastic. I've tried it all. And the natural is the best. Cottons are the best. Silk is the best. Wool is the best. And, and it, the more sensitive you become, 
the more um, electromagnetic aware you're going to notice when you buy uh, a silk something versus a cotton something versus a polyester, how long are you going to be able to be in the polyester? How long are you going to be able to be in the cotton? Is your body and energy breathing? And the energy, you know, when you do color, you want to pay attention because the person many times, their lymphatic system is the first system in their physical body that may receive that. And if they're sensitive, they're immediately going to get wicked cold or wicked hot. And those are a physical response to the vibration that they have just now received. Hmm. Does that, you know, it's a lot to think about. There's so much out there for you to read on. There's so much for you to, um, to in the color world. But if you start out real simple and douse through your, like start with, I would start with the physical body and then decide what you're going to work on and just stay in that area and keep everything very measurable. Because then you'll know when the person says, oh, I felt fantastic. Then you'll now have a teaching about the first, oh, so if I just kept it to a minute and did the indigo blue, the person felt fantastic but you've doused through all that. It's very helpful in that way. Yes, ma'am. I read about uh, the planet uh, energy and the color vibration uh, mm -hmm. this morning. And it's really fascinating. I just browsed too. I didn't really spend nope. a lot of time, but it's so uh, interesting because when one planet is... Um, uh, has more energy sending to the earth it's better to wear those colors that connect with so that like vibration balance. right to balance it. yeah right very interesting well and then you look at a person like i uh have a double scorpio so i have to be very mindful if something's the moon and everything's in scorpio because then i have way too much scorpio and Scorpio is not necessarily something you want to have too much of, right? Right. Fire up. That's why I don't wear too much red. <laughs> but that's, there's a, a, a book called, I can see the white book. I think it's called the Elohim of the Seven Rays. And it's, uh, I started writing it after I took Melchizedek the first time, Wendy. But um uh, and if you decide you're interested in the book, let me know and I'll take a picture of it and send it to you. But the thing that the reason I bring it up is that it's all about the creator gods and the color that's part of that world and how they created the planets and the vibration of the color and the gods that are involved in it. And it's like, wow. I mean, it just keeps getting. So depending upon the person, if they're crown chakra is out of place, if they're into esoteric learning, like Elohim and planets and things like that, would that be the first place? Yeah, they're taking in a lot of big energy coming in the crown. Are they going to sleep? They're putting that vibration into this physical body. Can you say out of balance? Yeah. So we, the job then of the energy practitioner is usually about how to balance, how to help that person balance and take into that energy. And sometimes it's about what's going on in the physical body. And sometimes it's about out there in their energy field. And maybe they're not doing the things out here to support the shift that they need to make to integrate and harmonize all this and that color green might be the key does that make sense yeah it's a lot hmm. i kept writing this and then writing it and then i wrote it again i'm like how am i going to put just this amount of information in a one-hour talk 
So, Can I ask a dumb question? There are no dumb questions, and yes, you may ask a question. So in the big picture, that spectrum of light, are we striving to come to the middle, to green? Like is green like a healthy, or is just whatever's gonna offset and balance where we are? Um, so the, it's basically, we have everything in us. Right. Macro, microcosm, right? You take a little particle from Cindy Mattingly and it looks just like the world, right? Macro, micro. So the idea though, is that Cindy's vibration is very different than Rachel's vibration. Cute, cute kid. Um, so we have different vibrations, but what does, what's required for you to be in alignment and balanced can be very different than what's required for me. Or, you know, it could be the same, you know, it, it, but it could be the same as in the color world, but it's not the same as the type of meditation you might choose to do. Hmm. So it's none of it is about us all being the same. Right. It's actually the embodiment of your uniqueness that makes, makes it perfect. You know? But it's a good question, not a dumb question. Thanks. Well, you know, the thing is, is, so I've been a practitioner for 40 years, right? The thing that I've heard the most statement is people want to do what I'm doing. And they think, I want to serve the light like you do. I'm like, ah, uh, hold on just a second. I don't serve the light. I'm in the middle. I'm discerning the light and the darkness because I'm balanced. That's reality, is knowing about both of them, denying neither one of them. We want to look at the pretty stuff, but if we deny the darkness, then we're denying the darkness within us. And that doesn't serve. That just makes us walking uphill crooked, right? One leg shorter or longer than the other. And the color can do the same thing. If we're just wearing one color, uh, I have a um, student, she tends to wear just like mocha, chocolate but they're all muted and i'm just like okay you're done you know when you come to see me maybe you don't do it any other time but you now have to wear the following colors and i'll douse i'll douse through them these are the colors that are good for your spectrum mm. they're healthy they're balanced it's kind of like you need to drink more water you need to eat your vegetables you need to take your B12 vitamin, <laughs> all those things in the physical. This is about your vibration and your energy and how to keep moving yourself forward. I like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a challenge, right? We're not simple beings. So, awesome. Well, I hope it was helpful for everybody. I'm going to just stop the recording and then 